Over this past one year, there's been an increase in the number of floods in Kerala, which has had various repercussions on their families, friends, etc. Why is this happening? The sea level is literally rising, and the important question is to ask them why. So, we're gonna play a quick game. I'm gonna show you a couple different photos, and I'd love for you to think about which of these could be possible contributors to the sea level rising. Here we have three different flasks, which might have water in them, and we're gonna simulate three different scenarios and see what their effect is on the level of water. So here, this is when we have ice on land, things like glaciers melting. We're gonna put into the funnel above to see the level of the water after ice from the glaciers melt. For the second one, what happens is this is when there's already ice inside of the water. With an iceberg, most of it is underwater, so we're gonna look at the effect of that. And this last one is gonna represent climate change. So as the environment gets warmer, what happens to the level of the water? After about one hour, these are our results. Starting with this one, this is where we had the glaciers melt into the water. You can see a large increase in the water level. It started at 250 ml and is now all the way up here. So this is because as the glaciers melted, all of the excess water was running down into the water. Here for the second one, this is where we already had pre-existing ice inside of the water. So as you can see, it started around 250 and it's almost at the exact same place. This makes sense because the ice was already inside of the water. In the ocean, you can expect the water level to be a little bit lower since ice tends to have air pockets inside of it. And lastly, this one that represented climate change. As you can see, there's a very slight increase. It went from 250 just a little bit up. This is because as water becomes warmer, it tends to expand, which means it takes up more space and volume. That's why the sea level rises. What's the science behind human-caused flooding? Let's take a look at three different examples of why flooding takes place. First, sea level rise can cause permanent flooding. Our atmosphere is warming because greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide from our toxic emissions absorb and trap heat from the sun, raising our average temperature. This effect is called global warming, where higher temperatures can cause glaciers and ice sheets to melt more rapidly. As we saw in our experiment, when the ice and runoff flows into water, it raises the level of the oceans. Global warming can also heat up the ocean water. As we saw in our experiment, heating water causes thermal expansion. This is when the water molecules become more active and take up more space or volume, so the overall level of the water rises. A second major reason floods are occurring more often is from deforestation. Farmers and other people clear forests for agricultural and residential use. The devastating Kerala floods of 2018 were attributed to a combination of factors including global warming and deforestation. When trees are removed from the environment, it loosens the soil, increasing the chance of soil erosion. Trees normally absorb large quantities of heavy rainfall in their root systems, but without trees, the effect of heavy rains are felt more intensely, since there is less natural protection and absorption by trees. A third major cause of flooding is from urban concentrations. The Chennai India floods of 2015 were attributed in part to urbanization and concentration of population in a low-lying area. Because food bank areas are commonly encroached on and built on, there isn't enough open space, greenery, and soil for rainwater to naturally drain out into the ground. This lack of natural drainage capacity led to the severe floods of 2015. What is the environmental impact? Here you can see that over the previous 19 centuries, the net change in our sea level was negligible. But in the 20th century, sea level has risen in different parts of the world between 4 to 8 inches. And unfortunately, the increase is really accelerating. Here you can see a direct correlation between temperature levels and floods. As the global climate has warmed over the past several decades, the frequency of floods has also risen sharply, especially in the recent years. Projecting ahead, a 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature increase is considered by many scientists as being locked in as early as a decade from now. By the end of this century, if we don't dramatically cut back our emissions, we potentially face a 6 degrees Celsius increase in average global temperatures. By 2030, as temperatures rise, the frequency and intensities of floods will also rise. Expect to see more intense hurricanes, higher storm surges, more floods, and greater devastation from Kerala to New Orleans. By 2050, the World Bank estimates that 143 million people in just Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, and India will become climate migrants. They will be forced out of their land due to flooding and other climate effects. By 2100, scientists have been raising their projections and now many expect a 1 to 2 meter rise in sea level. 
This would cripple many urban areas around the world, as 75% of global mega cities lie on the coast. Our own generation, and certainly our children, may see cities from Mumbai to Miami become increasingly inhabitable, and at least partially submerged or at heightened risk of flooding, even by 2050. Could it get worse? Yes, very possibly. As scientists continue to raise their projections upwards, history points to an even more devastating scenario. We're already finding that ice sheet melting is accelerating. One Antarctic study found a 50% increase in the rate of melting in just the last 13 years. In the next 10 to 20 years, we're expecting a 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius temperature rise. 125,000 years ago was the last time our planet was 1 to 2 degrees Celsius warmer. So what happened then? Sea levels rose 20 to 30 feet. That would put 600 million people who live in coastal areas less than 10 meters above the sea level at risk. Or could it get even worse than that? The last time carbon dioxide levels were as high as scientists expect them to reach by 2050 was 3 million years ago. What happened back then? Sea levels rose up to 70 feet. This would put billions of people at risk. In order to make a change, we need to start by focusing on stopping climate change. If the temperature doesn't increase, then the glacier will melt, the atmosphere will heat up. While these changes will be a little hard to notice in the actual sea level, they will happen over time and we will be able to notice them later. We are the ones who made this problem. We are the ones who are causing more natural disasters to happen. So we need to do something about this. In the comments below, share your experiences and stories with natural disasters and what you did when they occurred. Also, help spread the word so we can stop climate change. So what's preventing change? Unfortunately, one study found that 40% of adults worldwide have not even heard of climate change. And in developing countries like India, that number can rise to about 65%. Plus, there are many vested interests and misinformation about the scientific validity of our environmental impact. So how can you help make an impact? Psychologist Nathaniel Brandon wrote, The first step toward change is awareness. One simple step you can take today is to spread this video to raise awareness of climate change. Spread awareness. Spread. Signs of the impact.